the Republican, Radical Republican Party by James McPherson, cynical theory to look at the development of how this is pseudo intellectualism at its height right now. See, and he calls he even calls it pseudo intellectualism. Well, it's funny. You know, Citing he's, sources he's, is pseudo intellectualism. He cited uh, cynical theories. James which, Lindsay, yeah. Which is a good thing Vosh didn't know who that was because he would have the whole debate would have been like, you just cited James Lindsay. You're an idiot. That would have yeah. been the entire conversation if he had noticed that. He didn't. Yeah. Good thing he's not paying attention. But why not address what I've said? Movement in between, I'll, I'll quote the rise and fall of communism. If you've read so between much, then why not? Those are three different ideological trajectories. Why not counter the This is okay. I think this is 100%. Vosh being a dishonest actor, being a weaselly liar, okay? Because he's trying to give the argument. He's What if he's trying to say, not only did he say what he's drawing upon, but he's trying to lay out the argument and Vosh keeps interrupting him by saying, why don't you counter the argument? Why don't you counter the argument? He's what he's literally trying to do while you're talking over him. And I think he's doing this in order to try to prevent people from literally hearing what he's saying so that he can kind of trigger what if so that what if gets off on the subject and talks about something else that's my right. theory yeah because he's the, about to destroy him yeah right he sees what if coming in with the b-52 bomber loaded ready to drop and he's like oh shit right yeah because if like try to listen to what what if is saying you know underneath vosh interrupting him cry of freedom to talk about the policies of the republic radical republican party by james mcpherson cynical theory to look at the development of how this is pseudo the so the a book on the the history of the republican party cynical theories to uh, a book on the history of the marxist uh foucault postmodernist uh thinkers intellectualism at its height right now why not address what i've said in between i'll i'll quote the rise and fall of communism if the rise and fall of communism for the marxist you've read so between much then why not those are three different ideological trajectories why not counter like the argument that... then okay so he's saying these are three different ideological uh they're both they're all three on very different ideological trajectories that's part of his argument because Confucius, Confucian philosophy influenced in the Enlightenment Europe, that that America as a devi sorry that Europe is a deviation of Chinese philosophy. It's creating a single logical line and then extrapolating. Okay, an we're literally talking about the same goals in the same country. You have the abolitionists who fought for racial equality for black people. It doesn't Vosh? Why was Vosh such a fucking idiot? It doesn't matter if they have the same goals. It does not matter. That's completely irrelevant to being influenced by one another, to sharing the same philosophy. They could have the same goals and have a different philosophy about how to achieve it. Right. Yeah. I mean, like, if, if the goal is, I don't know, what, what, I mean, if the goal is to implement co ops, okay. And you have one group of people wants to do this by being huggy buggy hippy dippy leftist, and the other group wants to be Richard Spencer and says, yes. "Well, our co-ops are for white people only, and we need to have some authoritarian government mandate all this stuff." <laughs> I mean, they're both in favor of creating, you know. Yeah, they both have the same corporate goal. Corporate co-ops, but uh, is it the same thing? I mean, this is really right. Vosh and Richard Spencer are both in favor of universal health care. Does that mean that they're the same ideological? Of the same ideological persuasion? Right. And when you're talking about something like broad, like racial equality, which can be interpreted by so many people in so many different ways. <laughs> we'll ask uh, Ibram X. Kendi how he interprets racial equality. Right, right. <laughs> no, but like, it, it, so, you know, if, if you could say like, oh, well, you know, um, you know, German, well, you know, Germans were fighting for, for well-being. You know, the German socialists were talking about how to, you know, fix their country and act for the working man and the working class. And then the German national socialists came in and were advocating for the same thing, too. Does that mean that it's the same movement? Yeah. Does that mean that so, one leads to the other? Like, it's just a very dumb argument. This is so dumb. Yeah. But and he so also dumb. And it's like he keeps prevent because he as what have said, 
these were operating under different ideologies. Right. Yes. And the ideology and, is important. Right. And I think part, maybe part of the problem with the conversation is I don't think what if ever gets a chance or he lets him, he lets himself or he lets Vosh kind of take him off track from just saying, these are the different ideologies. Yeah. That's why they're different. Yeah. It becomes them talking over one another, which totally sucks. Yeah to the civil rights movement, which fought for racial equality for black people, to the modern BLM movement, which fights for racial equality for black people, and every single successive group quotes and heavily cites the, the preceding groups. This isn't like some, well, a butterfly flag. See, it's so bizarre, too, because he is making the thing that, the argument that we've always accused him of, that people believe CRT is just an extension of the civil rights movement, and it is right. not. It is not remotely an extension of the civil by their rights own movement. accounting, right? Yes, they 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 have to change it because it's so obvious that there have been huge gains in racial equality. <laughs> you have to basically construct this conspiracy theorist uh, theory to uh, to assess the world in the way the critical race theory theorists uh, assess it. Yeah, it's I ridiculous. Mean, the page I always pull, page two, of the introduction of CRT. Yes. Key ranks that form the movement. The aspect of our work which most markedly distinguishes it from conventional liberal and conservative legal scholarship about race and inequality is a deep dissatisfaction with traditional civil rights discourse. Yeah, see, that completely obliterates Vosh's argument there. It's so stupid. They're basically separating themselves ideologically. Yes. They're saying, listen, no, Vosh, you've got it wrong. We aren't an extension of civil <laughs> rights. We're a break with civil rights. We're we our central premise is that civil rights failed. Right. Yeah. Well, they so the thing with CRT and the CRT people is that they they change their mask according to who they're talking to. Right. Yeah. So totally. when Kimberly Crenshaw is talking to Joy Reid. She's gonna be like, oh, of course, it's a continuation of the civil rights movement. Yeah. And then yeah. once, you know, she's writing an academic paper to her radicals, it's like mask off, you know, this is very different. That and, was a very but, good folksy impersonation. <laughs> thank you. But this is this is part of the uh, Vasha's aggressive stupidity tactic because he gave one example, one vague example. Okay. He says, Martin Luther King Jr. cited Frederick Douglass, which first of all, He'd have to be more specific than that. We're just assuming that he did, which is probably a fair assumption. But secondly, that doesn't prove Vash's point at all. Yes. And yet, because he brought that out, now he's going to say, oh, all these people from all these movements are constantly citing people from the previous movements. Therefore, it's the same. And he, and he says all of this, he says this grand thing based off this one tiny example that doesn't even prove Vasha's argument. And he doesn't even really give the example of. No, he doesn't even give the specific example of it. Right, yeah. Sophistry. Yes. Peace Flapped sophistry. its wings in China, therefore that butterfly is responsible for the American Revolutionary War bullshit. This is a very direct line. And for you to respond to that with like a, how many books have you read suggests to me a kind of, I don't know, insecurity in your ability to refute that fact. Why don't, why don't you believe these are part of the same movement? They're clearly fighting for this. Because he's read three books that lay out arguments to the contrary. He's pretty, it, like, why are you even asking this question? It's, but it's so dishonest. He's like, the fact that, the fact that you cite books shows that you're insecure with your level of knowledge. <laughs> yeah this is why is this sophistry just fucking bugs the shit out of me it's like it is it is you know chronic stupidity just on display they're proud of their stupidity adam how dare you have to read books for knowledge okay you should be big brain enough that simply by wandering through existence you're just through like sheer force of will through osmosis your brain just absorbs all the prerequisite knowledge to make statements about anything just by existing that's what real big brained intellectuals do they don't read books that's for pussies it's so it's so it's so bad it's it's terrible like, and we'll I... also you know talk about insecurities he's trying to lay out his argument and Vosh is interrupting him. Vosh yes. is the one who's acting 100% insecure in this moment. Yeah, displaying his insecurity here. 
I just I feel like there's I'm just horrified that Vosh is is downplaying finding you uh, using books for knowledge. Yes, it's yes. awful. Same thing. The fact that you bring up no historical examples between the leaders of said movements or show that you've done research on the topic, because no one among historians, I have read nowhere that the modern abolitionist movement is a direct descendant of the is a direct descend is a direct ancestor of the modern social justice movement. I'm not and a responsible for no what you evidence. Read. And no, and I have made my <laughs> look. He's like, he's I'm like not responsible for what you've read. That's not a citation for where you're getting it from, Bob. Yeah. What the fuck? What the fuck? Where he's asking you, where did you get this argument from? What is your evidence? Did you just pull it out of your no. butthole? And so Vosh much... is like, oh, well, you know, just because you haven't read what I'm not going to tell you I've read. Yeah. So much of, and I hate it, so much of internet debates especially like leftist internet debates relies on this fake obtuse act where you pretend like you don't understand what the person is saying. Oh yeah. And then you interpret it in like this crazy way. Cause like, as you said, obviously when he says, you know, you're not basing this off anything there, what he's saying is, what are you fucking basing this off of? I haven't read. No, when he says, I haven't read any of this, what he's meet, what he's saying is I haven't read anything of what you're talking about. What are you talking about? What are you basing this off of? Right. And then his response isn't to defend the claim or to give an example. So say, well, I'm not responsible for the fact that you haven't read every book in history. Gee. Which he just he's not citing any book. He basically no. pulled this argument out of his fucking asshole. Of and course now he, did. he doesn't have anything to defend the argument with. And because he's just so happened to be debating someone who's read three books that contradict his literal argument, he's like totally chapped about it. <laughs> Yeah, you you just make shit up, Vosh. Other other people read things that contradict that stuff, and there are better arguments that are being mm -hmm. made. But this is all performative nonsense, anyway. So yeah, my point. You, I, I'd like to ask I'm, you a question when you're I'm, done. With well, yours. you have to answer mine. How are these? I've answered not... my question in the back. And, and then he he poses the question as a negative. How the fuck are you supposed to provide evidence? Right. Well, and, and this is also, again, this is so dishonest because he's like, you have to answer my question. You never answered his question. <laughs> yeah, totally. You never answered his question about where are you drawing this information from? But he has, he, he the question Vosh is asking now, he literally has answered because he's listed three yeah. books that count, contradict this narrative. Right. Best way I can. You've answered I, it by saying, uh, I haven't read an answer to that. Like, you've answered my question by saying, you don't know how to answer my question. I want a real answer. How are I these... Not <laughs> saying, I haven't read anything that supports what you're saying is not, I don't know how to answer your question. It's saying, you're bullshitting. Yes. Yeah. Answer your question movement. the way I will. Okay. So then I will follow through on that and say, since these are clearly part of a contiguous social trend in the United States. And he just asserts it. He just asserts it. He's like, I, I don't know. need to provide again. evidence for any of this shit. Yeah. Let me just assert it again here. We've, provi <laughs> We've provided more context to this entire situation than Vosh has. Well, yeah, but this is, again, this is Sitch's law. He's, he's hiding behind sort of this vague definition of contiguous movement. Right. Whatever the fuck that means. Okay. Right. Well, and he's arguing for something that CRT people don't even argue for, which is just bonkers. Right. 